Okay, so the video I thought we'd share today is when you start to get into uh, p precision reloading, one of the most common things is where do I seat my bullet? What's the depth that I should seat this at? What we need to do is we need to find out where the rifling start in the rifle, and every rifle is going to be different. So I'm going to go through a few little steps and kind of show you how to establish that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the bolt out of this gun. Okay. Now I'm going to take just a bullet by itself, and this is going to change. This procedure you'll have to do for every single bullet that you reload, um, every type. So every bullet has more or less of a shoulder depending on the weight, depending on the brand, stuff like that. So we're going to use this. This is a Hornady Amax. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right up here in the chamber, try to get it to go make sure I'm right in the chamber. And I'm going to take part of a cleaning rod and I'm just going to gently push that bullet and I'm going to apply just a little bit of pressure and I'm holding it against the riflings. Now I'm going to take another part of a cleaning rod and this has a flat front and I'm going to come down and I'm just going to touch that bullet. And I can make sure that I can, I can push it here and I can feel that I've got that bullet and I've got a good seat on the riflings. So now just very carefully I'm going to let that go. I'm going to hold pressure to the back. I'm going to take a real fine pin and I'm going to mark right on that cleaning rod. Just really fine line. You can also use a razor blade and just put a little scratch on it. I have these cool little drafting pins that are super, super fine, so I like to use that. Okay, so now I have that established. I can pull this out. I'm gonna remove my bullet out of there. Okay. Now what I can do is I can go through the process on, on a practice cartridge. This is a cartridge that doesn't have a primer, it doesn't have powder and I can start to figure out where I want that and I can actually put this bullet in put my bolt and I can push this up against the front of it make a mark and then I can measure my run out so let's just do it real quick here with this one so I have a little mark now I have two marks. I don't know if you can see this, but now I can take my caliper and I can measure that distance. So right now, that's at 55 thousandths. So there's, in essence, when that bullet goes off, there's 55 thousandths of jump before it engages the riflings. And that's kind of a maximum. I've talked to the guys at Barnes and they say you want for some of the uh, banded solids and their X bullets possibly up to 50 thousandths and it's just something that you play with. You go to the range, see what your groups are, see how good they are and just kind of take it around. That's one method of doing this. I'm going to show you another one. This other one is the one that I per personally like more but it's a little trickier to do and it's called the smoke method. Okay, so I have my same cartridge, and uh, just a practice dummy cartridge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice seating this bullet, and I'm going to lengthen it a little bit, and I'm going to find where the riflings just start to touch, and then I'm going to create my sample cartridge, if you will. So every time I go to reload, I'm measuring this, and it really helps out. So to put the smoke on it, what we're going to do we're going to light a candle and I like my my little polka dot candle here that's pretty hot huh okay I'm going to put the bullet right in here and I hold it close down into the frame see all that black smoke that just went all all over that that cartridge now what I can do is I can carefully put it in the chamber and close the bolt on it and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to hold right here to keep it from touching anything as I draw that out. Okay. Now what I'm looking for 
are the marks of the riflings and I don't see them on this one yet there's the one from dragging across the bottom as it chambered but I'm not seeing those marks from the riflings so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this bullet out just ever so slightly probably five thousandths at a time until I just start to see those riflings start to touch and I will show you what that looks like in one second okay I've repeated that process and I've gone about five thousandths of an inch each time what I've done is I can take a little fine line and I can kind of track my movement of the bullet as I'm doing this but what I want I want to see these marks from the riflings you can see one right there you can see one right there you can see one right there one right there and I'm, I'm hoping that's in focus basically what it is is just just a little mark in the smoke so that it's taken and rubbed that off this is the most precise method, method that I know of because we're only dealing with the thickness of that smoke so as soon as that rifling touches that smoke you can see the evidence the real trick is to get that cartridge out without rubbing that smoke see if I even just barely touch it it creates these lines so I know that this cartridge is zero run out to my riflings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm going to write right on this smoke test and then I'm going to write all of my data so what the bullet is, the weight of the bullet I'm going to take a measurement of this and I'm going to write that down there is another way to measure uh, that takes a special little cone and it actually measures the shoulder which is a little more accurate typically when I'm doing these bullets the bullets that I buy are on the match type grade and I think it's okay to measure the overall length so I'm just gonna measure the length of my bullet and I'm gonna record that and then what I can do is I can start to play around with different run out depth so I like to shoot at about 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch but what I can do is once I have this established then when I'm making my cartridges I can try different depths and see how my grouping is see how I shoot this will make a huge difference um, every gun is different every gun likes a different run out this is a great tool to show you how to do it I hope this was educational thanks so much